Welcome once more to our YouTube channel. So today we want to look at literal mock 2023. Of course, math section of it. We already looked at the physics part of it. So if you have not checked that one out at the end of this video, um, there's going to be a video option. One of them is going to be the literal mock physics. And make sure you, you, you do check that one out. It's quite interesting. All right. I hope you enjoy some maths today. Let's go. So this paper is going to have 10 episodes and the episodes are arranged like this. Today we are looking at episode 1 and make sure to stick around for the rest. When a polynomial of degree m is multiplied by a polynomial of degree n, where m is less than n, the resulting polynomial is of degree. Okay, so uh, degree m here simply means that the highest power of x in that polynomial is m. Okay, so if I get that polynomial, I multiply with a new polynomial whose highest power is n. You notice that I'm going to get a new polynomial whose highest power is going to be m plus n, and that's going to be the degree of our new polynomial. So our answer is b. All right, guys, so this question two, given that x plus 1 all squared is a factor of the polynomial, this, the value of b is, well, there's a tiny problem with this question, all right, and I'm going to explain to you when I'll be solving the paper two of this mock, right, because the same trick was tested in the paper two, and I'm so looking forward to solving that problem with you. But yes, there was an error here because this quadratic divisor has repeated roots. That's why that will not work here. So, uh, but I've just shown you some general things for you to know. If g of x squared is a factor of the polynomial f of x, then g of x is also a factor of f of x, all right? Uh, for example of this would be 4. 4 is a factor of 8. The square root of 4, which is 2, is also a factor of 8. 16 is a factor of 32. The square root of 16, which is 4, is also a factor of 32. All right? So, yeah, just so you are clear with that. X plus Y is a factor of F of X means that F of negative 1 equals 0, right? That's factor theorem. So, you place that in there, you are going to get B plus A plus 2 equals 0. And, uh, yeah, there's no way you can further simplify it. So, that's why the answer is known here. But, interesting thing in the paper, too. Please watch out for that one. function g of x equals this is all right there are two ways to go about this one so the first way would be to use formula right the minimum value of a quadratic function is basically 4ac minus b squared over 4a so we're going to substitute what is our a our a is 1 our b is 0 the x term right is 0 and then our c is negative 1 so you keep plugging those items you're going to get y mean as negative 1 but for method 2 we can differentiate this thing, right? Look for that stationary point. The turning point of this quadratic curve would be its minimum point, all right? Because, they, of course, clearly you see that a is greater than zero, so the, this quadratic curve is going to have a minimum turning point. So uh, if we differentiate, we're actually going to get 2x equals zero. So x is zero. That's the x-coordinate of the turning point. Get, get this x coordinate of the turning point and put it back here. You get the y coordinate of the turning point and you get negative 1. And so the turning point is 0, negative 1. So the minimum value is negative 1 there. So our answer is C. The number of distinct arrangements of the letters of the word confused is... All right, so let's just count the letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But two are repeating, right? So you're basically going to have 9 factorial over 2 factorial there. And so our answer is just B.
Okay, so we have 2 over i to the power 5 into i plus 1 plus i. So what we have to do here is that we have to recognize that i to the power 5 is just i, all right? Because i to the power 4 is 1, then you multiply that with another i, that gives you i, right? So you now recognize that if we send in this i here, we're going to get i times 1, which gives us this i. i times i gives us negative 1. Uh, if we go over, we have to multiply up and down by the conjugate of the denominator. Conjugate means that you are basically negating the imaginary part, okay? So we, if we negate the imaginary part, you notice that we are going to get negative 1 minus i now. Uh, multiply it up and then also multiply it down. If we simplify that, we are going to get 2 multiplied by that conjugate up. Then our when we simplify it down, we are going to get d squared plus the coefficient of i here squared, which basically gives us 2, all right? So when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, the result of that is basically just the real part squared plus the coefficient of the imaginary part squared, all right? So you don't have to overwork yourself with that. So that gives us negative 1 minus i, and our answer is d. Given the statement, John is tall, John plays basketball, which of the following represents the statement, John is not tall and he plays basketball? John is not, so we simply negate this statement, right? And then, and he plays basketball, and then, and, and then you get the statement cure. So our answer clearly is B. So B is the answer there. The value of e raised to the negative lean x equals, all right, so of course, uh, all right, I've displayed the answer already for that one. So e raised to the negative lean x is the same as e raised to the power lean 1 over x, right, because you put negative 1 over here, it becomes 1 over x for this guy. So that basically gives you 1 over x because e raised to the power lean a is just a, so e raised to the power lean 1 over x will just be 1 over x. So as I see there. f of x equals this the value of a for which the function is continuous in the interval in the given in the in given interval is all right so to test for continuity we need to look for a possible point of continuity so we look at two here and two here so these are boundaries right so this particular value is common to the two functions so that's where we're going to test for continuity so limit as x tends to 2 from below has to be equal to limit as x tends to 2 from above has to be equal to f of 2. So limit as x tends to 2 from below would basically be us putting 2 here. So we have 2 times 2 which gives us 4 plus a. And limit as x tends to 2 from above is 4 because it's a constant function from above. And so you are going to notice that we have 4 plus a equals 4 which means a is 0 which means our answer is a. Perfect. relation is all right so i've given some notes here on relations so equivalent relation equivalence relation has to be what symmetric reflexive and transitive all right we all know that right uh the next part is a partial order relation has to be reflexive transitive and anti-symmetric what does it mean for a relation to be anti-symmetric well if a relates b and b relates a then a has to be equal to b all right uh Strict order relation has to be transitive, anti-symmetric, and irreflexive. C is very close to it, but C does not say irreflexive. Take note of it. 
so that's why c is off uh and so you don't have any good answer here so total order all total orders first of all are partial orders all right so the only additional thing to total orders is that um you have to test for whether or not each term or each quantity in the relation forms a relationship with another for instance if a is less than b and b is greater than a then boom that relation is a total order all right so our answer here is known okay because you see that our strict order is not defined here of x squared plus 1 over x minus 2 greater than 0 is all right notice that this numerator is always positive so whether or not this function is negative or positive would be determined solely by this denominator so we are going to get the values of the value of x there to become our critical value so our critical value is x equal to right so you notice that our interval will be x less than 2 or x greater than 2 so you notice that well f of x to be greater than zero of course when the denominator is positive so when is this denominator positive if x is greater than two right so you now notice that well our solution set means that our x has to be greater than two so that this guy is always positive and so our answer is c The sum from r equals 1 to infinity of 8 into 1 over 2 to the power r is all right. So, what we want to do is rearrange and it out of the summation sign and then get a few terms because you're starting from r equals 1, right? So, put 1 here, you have half, put 2, you have 1 over 4, put 3, you have 1 over 8. So, notice that these terms here form a GP, all right? So, that's what I'm saying. So, A is half and R is half. So, we can get the sum to infinity as A over 1 minus R. And so, we put in those values and so you notice that our sum to infinity is 1. But take this one and multiply with this 8 out here. Remember, we took the sum to infinity of this sequence in bracket. So, multiply by 8, we have 8 there. So, this total sum gives us 8. Now, the method 2 would be for you to simply rearrange this sequence. All right so that it looks like a standard gp so the general term of a gp is cn equals a r to the n minus one so what we really want to do here is that we simply rearrange this guy so that we have half out here and then uh, we will now have half into r minus one so that this becomes our a and then this becomes our r and so you come and get your sum to infinity again like this a over one minus r so our answer there is a If R mark R is greater than or equal to A, where A is a constant, then, all right, so, of course, let's define what an absolute value function is. So, it's R if and only if R greater than or equal to 0, or it's negative R if and only if R is less than 0. So, you notice that R is greater than or equal to A for all, for R greater than or equal to 0, all right, if A is positive. And then you are going to notice that, well, we are going to get negative R. This absolute value here it becomes negative R. Uh, greater than or equal to a right for r less than zero because we, notice that we are just defining this absolute value of r absolute value of r is r for r greater or equal to zero so in place of this absolute value i just put r there and you have greater or equal to a now if r is less than zero then you are going to get negative r here all right so that's why you see negative r here greater or equal to a and so if you simplify, you're going to notice that, well, our R can be less than or equal to negative A or our R is greater than or equal to A. And so our answer is C. Defined by H is defined by H of X equals 3X plus 2 over 5. The value of H inverse of 0 is. All right. So we need to find H inverse. So h of x is that let y is be equal, equal h of x so you notice that well our y equals 3x plus 2 over 5 if we make x the subject we're going to get x to be 5y minus 2 over 3 and so what do you do you replace x with y and then y with x so each inverse of x now becomes what 5x minus 2 over 3 5x minus 2 over 3 and so uh, you find out h inverse of 0 it basically gives you negative 2 over 3 and our answer is b there
Hey guys, so thank you to, for watching this video all the way to the end. That's our KC crew right there together with me. We are so appreciative of the fact that you stick around, you come around our channel. Help us reach more subscribers. Thank you so much.